This is a guided tour of the stuff inside the Maker Lab Electronics Arduino Upgraded Learning Kit. This kit is what the school will provide you to get you started with embedded systems. It has a list of parts, a top bin, and a bottom bin. You'll build most of your circuits on the solderless breadboard. While having a soldering iron and solder is a plus, most of the circuits you'll make won't need them. Female to male connectors are used to connect breakout boards to your circuit. The sex of the connectors are an engineering term for mating parts with holes and parts with pins, respectively. Push button switches provide manual digital inputs that is either on or off. Hats make them look cool and easier to press. Then we have a bag of parts. Resistors are essential components needed for switches and lights. You have 220 ohm, 1000 or 1 kilo ohm, and 10,000 or 10 kilo ohm. Normally, I'd talk about the electronics number code and the color code to help identify the resistors, but because of terrible color contrast, just keep the resistors separate. Or use a zoomed-in phone camera to help identify the colors. The rest of the parts in the bag include light-emitting diodes or LEDs. These are polarized devices that have specific positive and negative pins. When enough power is provided, they light up. Light-dependent resistors or LDRs. These are non-polarized devices where the resistance reduces when more light hits the sensing surface. The infrared photodiode or IRPD. This polarized sensor detects infrared light that can pass through the blackened case. A similar device is the IR receiver intended to detect and work with signals from an infrared remote control like what is used with older televisions. Active and passive buzzers, both polarized devices. Active buzzers make a preset sound when powered while passive buzzers need a pulsing signal. The active buzzer is filled with epoxy in the bottom. Tilt switches are non-polarized devices with a ball bearing inside that contacts the pins when positioned upright. Older versions used mercury and are not recommended for use. The LM35DZ is a pre-calibrated sensor that returns the temperature of the chip inside as hundreds of a volt. So 25 degrees Celsius is 0.25 volts. The 74HC595 is an 8-bit shift register integrated circuit that captures and unfurls a timed sequence of digital signals. Moving on, a 7-segment LED display has 7 LEDs plus an eighth as a decimal point and is used to display numbers and some letters of the Latin alphabet. The 7-segment displays can be merged such as in this 4-digit module, with shared inputs to reduce the number of connections needed. To display simple graphics, an 8x8 LED matrix allows you to control 64 LEDs addressed by row and column. That's it for the top bin, now onto the bottom bin. This is the Arduino Uno board that you will use for the activities. It is wrapped in a protective bag and should be kept in the bag when not in use. A 16 column by 2 row alphanumeric liquid crystal display or LCD can show simple status messages. It uses the I2C protocol to connect to the Arduino. An IR remote control compatible with the IR remote sensor shown earlier. Unfortunately, it needs a lithium coin cell to work which is not included. A servo motor that allows for precise rotational positioning. It has several attachments that fit over the motor head to connect to physical objects. A stepper motor and driver breakout board for precise speed control. The female connector of the motor connects to a keyed male connector on the driver board. An RGB LED breakout board to generate almost every color human eyes can visualize. The individual color emitters are built into this single LED unit. A DS1307 real-time clock or RTC breakout board for keeping track of date and time. A lithium coin cell is needed to keep time when powered off and is not included. A 4x4 matrix keypad that uses shared connections. Pressing a button connects a row pin to a column pin, thus needing 8 pins to connect to the Arduino instead of 32. A relay breakout board that allows the Arduino to switch higher voltage or current devices on or off. This one can work with up to 250 volts AC and 10 amperes. A microphone breakout board has a microphone and audio amplifier built in to return a very rudimentary signal back to the Arduino to estimate sound amplitude. 
A DHT-11 humidity and temperature sensor breakout board allows for estimating environmental relative humidity. The temperature sensor is different from the LM35DZ. A water sensor board that sends back a signal if water bridges two of the contacts on the board. A potentiometer or variable resistor is useful for making a user-settable adjustment knob or for measuring slight rotation along the axle. A two-axis joystick uses two potentiometers to return the X and Y axis positions of the stick. A thumb thing allows for comfortable operation and has the standard push switch found in most game controllers. A radio frequency identification or RFID breakout board returns the values stored on a uniquely generated card or tag. Unfortunately, the mail headers are not soldered, so using this would require additional work. A bunch of mail-to-mail connectors for connecting the Arduino board to the solderless breadboard and for constructing circuits on the breadboard. A rather short USB Type-A to Type-B cable similar to those used in computer printers as well as a 9-volt battery to 5.5mm barrel jack adapter is provided. The USB cable is used to power and program the Arduino. For applications that require more power such as motors, a 9-volt battery, not included, can be used to power the Arduino Uno. An AC to DC switching power adapter, not included, can also be used. Make sure that it is center positive and at least 5 volts DC output. And that's it. Everything inside the MakerLab Electronics Arduino Upgraded Learning Kit.